Welcome to the fifth and final week of the course. Congratulations on making it this far. We're almost finished. In your student email, you'll find a course evaluation distributed by UM Online. As this is a new course, I'm really interested in hearing your feedback and perceptions. Please take the time to complete this confidential assessment. Last week, we completed our final two applied case studies using the MedSyn software. One of the outcomes for this course is for the student to have an applied software experience in the use of the EHR. I'm hopeful you found using the student edition of the MedSense simulation software useful in your pursuit to gain greater insight into health IT. Be sure to finish the second part of analysis paper two by reading and responding to the form created by your colleagues last week. The expected length of your response should be a minimum of 100 words. The last activity for this academic term will be to complete the final exam. It is not comprehensive and will be limited to the material covered in lessons 8 through 15. The exam will open at 6 a.m. on Thursday and close on Friday at 11.55 p.m. Expect a similar format as the last exam, including a two-hour time limit. If you've been completing the review questions covering the lecture lessons, you should be poised to do well on this assessment. Lesson 13 covers coding and reimbursement. Although coding and reimbursement are generally considered the business end of the healthcare system, all business decisions are based upon data provided by clinicians as documented in the EHR. The clinician must be aware of the business ramifications resulting from poorly documented or undocumented healthcare services. Entry errors created by the clinician will cause problems for the business office, insurance companies, and eventually the patient. Undocumented services increase the cost of the health care as the entire system is left to absorb the error. Coding for reimbursement is the responsibility of both business services and clinicians. The material for this lesson is found in Chapter 12 of the Garty textbook. Lesson 14 discusses the EHR in context of health information exchange. The ability for the patient to access and exchange clinical health data between different institutions is an important function of the EHR. Agreed upon standards between these differing systems is critical. In Western Montana, we've seen that our two regional hospitals have chosen health data information systems from two different vendors, Epic and Cerna, Cerner. Excuse me. As long as standards exist between these two systems, the function of exchanging healthcare data between differing institutions remains intact. Also of note is the ability to access records regardless of geographic location. Exchanging health information shouldn't be an issue whether a person is in Missoula or Missouri. All material covered in this lesson comes from the Office of the National Coordinator for Health IT. Lesson 15 discusses the importance of the EHR in the context of public health. Although the health, although health of the individual patient is typically the primary function of the EHR, an important secondary use of the record is in assessing the overall health of a group of individuals. This lesson examines the EHR in the context of meaningful use for disease prevention and improving overall health for the entire population. It also looks at the current and future state of the PHR as a tool for individuals looking to manage their own health. All material from Lesson 15 comes from the ONC Workforce Development Curriculum. So work hard this week, finish off the remaining material for the course, and I hope you've found the materials covered in the class helpful in your understanding of the EHR and useful in your pursuit in supporting clinical health care through health IT. Always remember our definition, health IT is the use of information technology as a tool to improve clinical health care quality, accessibility, and cost effectiveness.